Well, we also had the G1, Night 1, and Night 2, Block A and Block B. And there were some great matches over the past there were some two great nights. Ma- there were some great matches. It was so... Last night, or, the, or actually, this, it's a, technically this morning, but it, because of the time being on the West Coast, um, last night's show started at 1, um, our time. So it was kind of like, you know what... Fuck it. You know what I mean? I'm going to watch it, you know, or at least, I mean, the, the thing was, I'm going to watch it till the Ishii match, which is what I did. I actually watched the after that in the morning, but it's like, I'm going to watch Ishii at two, in Suzuki at two in the morning because it's like guaranteed a great match. So, so last night was really fun. You know, that old, the old late night watching New Japan and there's actually fans there and God bless those fans. They made no, they, they, they couldn't cheer and they couldn't boo, but they were clapping up a storm. It was like these matches were over with the audience and that made it, it was really fun. And the work was, you know, I mean, what there was uh, in two night, in two shows, I would say there was one match that was less than very good and it was pretty bad, but every other match was, was very good to excellent. Let's go over the block matches here. Night one, we had Will Ospreay and Ujiro. Well, well, let's just start with the opener. So the opener, oh, let me get my notes. Um, the night one opener was, um, so, you know, um, let's, 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 let's so many different notes. Uh, Yoda Suji and Yuya Uemura. It was so good, but it was short. Um, they just, they just, you know, hard chops. Uimura threw a great drop kick. He did a double arm overhead throw. Uh, he won with the Boston Crab. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the for the seven minutes this match took place, it was really good. The crowd was hot. So um, this was a really fun way to open the show. So then Will Osprey was next, and Will looked so happy. It was like. I've never seen this guy when he came out. He like I've never seen him so happy. I you know because he's hasn't wrestled in front of a crowd in six months, and he was just you know he had a whatever. I uh, I don't even want to get into Will Osprey because I'll get really upset. But um, but the the deal is is that he was exceedingly happy, and he probably had the best Ujiro match. The Yujiro's had since the last time Yujiro fought Tanahashi, because I can't remember a Yujiro match. Not that the match was great or anything, but it was absolutely very good. This match went like seven minutes, and really the vast majority of it was Osprey selling. I mean, Yujiro took like 80% of this match, which was kind of bizarre. Every time Osprey tried to make a comeback, he'd get a move or two and get cut off again. And finally, Yudro kills him with a lariat, goes for a power bomb. Osprey slips out, hidden blade, Os cutter, and he gets the pin. And then he cuts this promo. It's so wonderful to see these fans. He has missed them. He's not going to lie. Before he came out, he was scared and nervous. But then he looked in the mirror and he told himself, You're Will Osprey. There's no reason to be nervous. You're the best wrestler in the world right now. He says, New Japan has been good during the pandemic era. However, it is now much better because Will Ospreay is back. I, I really think that um, having Will Ospreay and Jay White back, and Kenta too, um, and Cobb too. You know, I mean, I think it really, it just gave him a lot of depth. It, the, you know, these, these, these shows were, I mean, the, the, the stadium show was, was really good. But I thought these shows, you know, because it's like, they're they're like just a little over two hours it's six matches and they're just they're just a breeze they're great we had jeff cobb and taichi and there was a little bit of goofiness early like uh taichi threw him outside and he hit him with like right in front of the referee with the ring bell yeah, the ring, which, the hammer, the hammer. Yeah, the hammer. Which I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but that's a disqualification in a Hell in a Cell match. Yeah, this referee just let it go. But after that, they well, they don't. They just they never do in GQs, which drives me freaking crazy because of it wasn't too bad. Actually, the only like I mean, it wasn't we, too bad. He hit him with a hammer right in front of the referee. 
well, I mean, I'm just so sick of the the outside interference that we got later, and and we got one outside interference match on both shows, which was the Bull Club matches. But the one thing which we'll get to later is that in the Sonata Yano match, it's like that finish was ridiculous. But anyway. So once they get to wrestling, it was pretty good. And Cobb made his big comeback. Taichi missed a super kick. Cobb hit with his giant DVD standing near fall. And finally, he had a gut wrench suplex, rolling gut wrench suplex. Yeah, he, goes, he, he just series. Tour of the Islands, went for it. Taichi avoided it. Hit a couple of kicks in the Black Mephisto and got the pin. Turned into a very good match. Yeah, a very strong match for, for Taichi. You know, the thing is with Taichi is just like... When he decides to wrestle, I mean, now this is like the, the most frustrating thing about him. When he sits there and just is in a match where somebody makes him wrestle, he's really good. But if you don't, he's just going to stall and do comedy. And, you know, he isn't necessarily so good at doing that. But, um, I mean, Cobb, Cobb, you know, did some, did some good stuff, did the big drop kick and um, you know, a lot of power moves. Not He didn't do any super power moves, but he did enough. But yeah, I thought match the match was really good. Then we had Ishii versus Suzuki, which going in you knew was going to be awesome, and it was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> you know the match uh, in your sleeve. They beat the shit out of each other for 15 minutes, and then like, so they're just killing each other and everything like that, and Suzuki keeps going for the gotch, and Ishii avoids it, and he avoids it, and he avoids it. Ishii is like the greatest seller in wrestling because it's like, he sells like a guy who's knocked out in a fight constantly or just in so much pain, but not like fake pro wrestling selling pain, like legitimate pain. And I'm sure he is. I mean, he's a it's you know, it's like a mar. It's it's like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's like Dave, the what? Marvel yeah. is Suzuki. Well, Suzuki's this guy is like in his early 50s. He first he was a fighter, then he became a pro wrestler. He's no, no, been no, no, doing no. He's this. Pro, he was a pro wrestler, a pro first, wrestler, then, then a fighter, then a pro wrestler, then a pro wrestler. Yeah, yeah. but I mean forever and and ever, and, ever. and 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 forget even before that. And he was a top class. I mean, he was a national level amateur wrestler. You know, growing up in college, you know, um, I don't remember what he placed, but I mean, he placed in nationals in college, and um, you know, he was Olympic hopeful in wrestling. So he did that too. Then he goes into pro wrestling where he was going to get the big push from being, you know, a legitimate shooter. Then he goes into um, MMA and he was one of the first legends of MMA. Then he goes back to pro wrestling. And now we're like three generations later and he is probably had more great matches this year than any single wrestler. It's unbelievable. And not only that, and I have not been to a lot of shows that Suzuki has been at, but I've been to a few. Every time I have ever seen this guy out of the ring, he's like chain smoking. And yeah. he goes in there at his age, having done this for 35, 40 years, from the beginning of his amateur wrestling to today. Yeah, prob probably. A smoker. Probably, probably between 35 and pro probably close to 40 years. I'm, you'd have to figure he probably started 14, yep. 15. He's in yeah. his early 50s now. And these two guys are going at this phenomenal pace. Like, I couldn't even believe it. In the middle of a pandemic, by the way, so God only knows, you know, how much training they're able to do. But well, but but, but Suzuki is one of those guys. He's he's Suzuki is from that era where you do your squats in your hotel room or your house all day long. I mean, so he he's doing his training. I don't know what Ishii's doing, but Ishii's Ishii is just a marvel because the thing is, is like he has taken so much punishment, and he looks it. But it's like the bell rings, and it's like he can do anything, and 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 you know what I mean. It's like Ishii has some of the best matches in the world, and he's been having them for years. But they're so physical, and the timing of these guys is you know it's like it's not only that they know when to do it, but they do it like with such suddenness and explosiveness at their age. And you're just, it's like, you know what the match is going to be. It was exactly what it was. It's like, you know, I mean, but, you know, this may have been Suzuki's best match of the year. And if not, you know, it's right up there with any of them, you know and I mean? And he had those, that Moxley match that was just incredible. And he had those Nagata matches and, um, you know, 
and uh, what's what was the other one? Um, didn't you even know, um, the I'm trying to remember. There's there was a couple, there was a couple of others, but this match, um, the um, Shingo Takagi match at the stadium, which was phenomenal. Um, that one actually might have been better than this. I, I would say the Shingo Takagi match at the stadium was his best match this year. This one might be number two or number three, but yeah like what an what a what a you know it was just an incredible match they go back and forth and finally Ishii goes for his brain buster but suzuki basically does a small package but he doesn't go for the cover he just stands right up he spins him around he hits him with the greatest gotch pile driver you've ever seen because she's selling of the gotch pile driver was like the greatest selling of a gotch pile driver you ever saw and he pinned him this match was unbelievable yeah yeah it was great it was you know, I was so happy watching this match at two in the morning. It felt to me like wrestling is back, you know, and I haven't felt that way at all. It's like I've seen wrestling. I watched some AEW stuff and WWE stuff that's, you know, I mean, like, look, Wednesday's TV, both of shows were, were really strong. But this and the Jingu Stadium with that Takagi match, like with Suzuki, was was really good. But this was... I think it was because it's in an arena, not in a big, big empty stadium. It's in a, an arena where, you know, the building is as, as packed as they were going to let it be. I don't know what the, I didn't look at the, what the number was, but I mean, it was, you know, I think they were going to sell 50% of the seats. And so it's as packed as they're going to, as they're, they're going to let it be at the stage. And the people are going crazy without cheering or booing. And they're just clapping up a storm, and they're into everything. And it's like it's not like there's no heat; the heat's there, you know. And and the one thing with the the um, you know, and I mean tonight tonight's match that just ended, uh, just right right in, just ended with Tanahashi and Naito actually contradicts this, but that's also because Tanahashi's unbelievably good. But um, the general thing that I've seen during the pandemic is is that you do both in Japan or the United States, you do a long psychology-based match and it just doesn't work because it's long and people, you know, because you don't have the crowd. A psychology-based match, you need the crowd. Um, and, you know, these guys, you know, but when you do like this, the physical match, the, the Suzuki match or, or an Ishii match, they don't lose any, like Suzuki can do this match in front of no people. And it would be every bit as good as it was in front of people. I mean, it wouldn't be like maybe I wouldn't be as happy watching it because you don't have the crowd reaction. But I mean, legitimately, if this match had no people, it would have been a phenomenal match. Whereas a lot of matches where you if you if you take away the fans, they would not be so good. Jay White and Shingo. The first half of this match was very good. And then, of course, we had all of the. All the shenanigans. The referee took a bump. There'd been some stuff earlier. Uh, White took the ref. Ghetto hit the ring. Shingo punches him out. Then the ref takes a bump. Shingo hits the last of the dragon. There's no referee. White hits him with a low blow. He calls for red shoes to get in the ring. Drops Shingo on his head with a cradle. Brain buster. Blade runner gets the pin. This was not as bad as... What was a match on night two? There, there was a much worse match on night two. Uh, was it Evil and Saber? Evil and Saber was, that was one with yeah. all the, yeah, yeah. But I mean, this uh, was still, I mean, there was too much stuff in here, but that's what you're going to get, so accept the match, it. The match itself was really good. I mean, in the sense of, um, um, you know, Shingo Takagi was great. You know, he's like, again, one of the best wrestlers in the world. And Jay White is is tremendous because he's different from everybody else in wrestling. I mean, he's the old school heel. He is the he, greatest heel. Yeah, he's the old school heel. He can work. He looks great. He is in great condition and, and like flaunts it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, doing the posing and everything like that. And I mean, I watch him. I'm in, I really am in awe of him, especially because he's so young and he's going to only get better. Um, I mean, he's going to be one of the superstars of the business. You know, the, I wish they didn't do that and they don't need to do it. I think it's, I think that like if, if he was going to do outside interference, in every fourth or fifth singles match, um, and you know, and it led to the finish or something. It's like okay, it's heat and and all that, you know, sparingly. But it's every match, and he doesn't need to do it. And this match would have been like better. Like the match was great, but the match would have been better without it. You know, there's the argument. Well, it adds to the heat, and it's like this one took away from the heat. You know, um, but um, you know, 
I mean, the work of the two guys, these guys are good. These guys are great. Then finally, we had Okada and Ibushi, which was, I would not say a five-star match. I think that was no. the over-under. I would go under. Oh, yeah, well under, well under. But they had a they had a very good match. And so the one thing the- about it is Okada is determined to get this fucking Cobra clutch over. But the thing is, he doesn't do it dynamically. He nobody do- buys it. I mean, even what, what? clapping, there's nobody clapping. They're just sitting there watching him try to get over this. And he tried it throughout the entire match. Well, he, he worked the match around it, and he's trying. But it's like he needs he, he needs, needs to beat someone in the G one with it. Well, he's that's got, what I'm he's sh- got to do. Well, he's gonna. It wasn't he didn't beat it didn't didn't tonight. But he'll probably. I'm gonna. I'll bet you he beats five or six people with it. So maybe by the end of this G one, it'll be over just because he beats so many people with it. But right now, it's it's in the developmental stage, and it's like he goes for it, but he just it's like not. It's not explosive, and the whole thing with with Okada and Ibushi is is that like the big move has to be explosive because, you know, that's what the fans expect. Um, you know, the tw- they do the twists and turns and the ch- exchange of holds, but the people expect like the big percussion movement to be, you know, whether it's the Rainmaker, which he never even did, I don't think, or you know, whatever the Kamagoe Goye, which you know, obviously Ibushi did to win. And all the other stuff, the drop kick and the Pele kicks and the Frankensteiners and all that. Like, you get those big, fast movements. And that's what the people want out of this kind of a match. And and got it for the most part. But then, like you said, then he goes to that Cobra Clutch. And it's just like, it's it's slow when he goes to it. And the move's not over. So it, um, you know, it, it, it hurt. This match was, an, this was, to me, like, okay... I mean, it was not, you know, even remotely close to their Tokyo Dome match. But the thing that that I found different is that the Tokyo Dome, the people could cheer and boo. And that's what made that match. And here, Okada needs people cheering and booing. They, he, he's not a clapper wrestler. Um, and the way that they wrestle where they go in and out and in and out of moves, um, that's, that's the kind of wrestling where the, ooh, you know, like that. There's a voice to that wrestling. Um, that makes that stuff that they do work. And there's no voice to this wrestling. There's only clapping. So this is where it was like, I'm watching this going like, you know what it is? It's like Okada. And, I, and I've seen it the whole, the whole summer. Um, I mean, and, and granted Okada's other matches this summer, some of them were, were, you know, actually really bad. And some of them were just so, so, and this was really good. But even with this being really good, Okada is someone who need the way he does his matches. He needs cheer, cheer, boo. You know whether whether you're cheering him or booing him, he needs that. Whereas, you know, like as like I said with Ishii and Suzuki, and and for God knows how Tanahashi even, which makes no sense, but he's just so good. They they can get by on just claps. So they, the one great spot in this match, which was actually almost a botch, was Abushi tries this springboard Hurricane Rana. But he actually loses his balance. And like 99 out of 100 people would just drop back to the apron and try it again. But he just decides, ah, fuck it. And he jumps and he pulled it off. He lost his, he lost his balance. He was, he, was, he, was, he was shaky. And then he comes off and he still, like it wasn't perfect, but it was good. You know what I mean? It was like, it was good and believable. It was like just a total great recovery. Yeah. They traded tombstone attempts throughout the match and... Finally, at the end, Ibushi hits a high kick, jumping knee, goes for the Kamagoye. Uh, Okada finally hits his two drop kicks. And then Okada tries the Kamagoye, but Ibushi turned into a power bomb. Running knee, Kamagoye got the pin. Very, very good match to end night one. Yeah, night one was great. Night two wasn't great, but night two was pretty damn good.